Hi. Hello. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. If you've been here before, you have maybe done a recent video of mine called the Cube Personality Test. In this test, I gave you a personality test quiz. In this personality test, I had you imagine a scenario and based on what you imagined, this scene was sort of revealing about your personality. I really explained what these personality tests are in depth in that video, so I'm going to link it right up here so just click on that and I did a long explanation but I don't want to overly explain in this video I sort of just want to jump right into it so basically if you'd like you can do that video first if you've already done it let's jump right in this is a new test that I found online and it's called the island imagination test I'm going to link where I found this in the description box down below but basically this test based on what you are going to be imagining in this test it's going to be revealing things about you with freakish accuracy it says so throughout the process you will use your imagination to picture things and then at the very end of the test I'm going to reveal what all of this actually meant so it's going to be quite fun so I think I'm going to have you imagine everything you can, like I've said before, record your answers so you can even record them in the comment section down below just for your own memory and then after I'm going to go over what all of your possible answers could mean about you what this says about you and I might even reveal my own answers in the end so I think it's going to be quite fun so let's get started now if you'd like you can close your eyes or just simply relax hopefully you're in a relaxing quiet environment because this is going to really test your imagination so when I ask you to imagine something the first thing that comes to mind is what you're going to stick with here okay so don't overly analyze things just stick with your first answer so this is called the island test let's get started imagine yourself on a piece of land the island you're on is surrounded by water. Picture this with as much detail as you possibly can. Imagine what the terrain on the island is made of. So what does this island that you're on look like? Imagine the terrain and keep that in mind. Close your eyes, picture that you're on an island. Imagine the terrain. Next, you're going to let me know how close or how far you are to the water around your island. So if you pictured yourself on this island with the terrain, how close or far are you from the water's edge? I would also like you to continue imagining the water on your island. How calm or how active? soft, gentle waves? Is it perfectly still? Is it quite active? Imagine the water. Now, imagine yourself getting into this water. So you've seen the water, now imagine yourself walking and getting into the water. Imagine feeling the water against your skin. Is the water a comfortable temperature? So imagine the temperature of the water. Is it comfortable, warm, cold? What is the temperature of the water? As you've imagined yourself feeling the water, how much of your body is actually in the water of your island? So the water surrounding your island, how much of your body is actually inside the water? Next, you're going to imagine a cup sitting on the ground. Pick up the cup and put water inside the cup. So fill up your cup with water, as much water as you imagine filling this cup with. So you're going to pick up the cup and you're going to simply place water inside the cup. Firstly, what is this cup made out of? What is the cup made out of that you're holding? Your cup, 
your mug, whatever you have imagined, what is the material of the cup? And how much did you fill up the cup? How full is your cup with the water? Now, you filled up your cup with water, you filled up the specific cup that you had in mind, now you're going to imagine yourself drinking the water. So you filled it up with the water from your island, now imagine yourself drinking the water. How much water did you drink from your cup? How much water did you drink? Now, did the thought of drinking the water from your island gross you out at all? Was it a pleasant experience to drink the water or unpleasant when you thought of drinking the water? Just imagine that. Now, after you've had a nice sip of water, or as much as you drink of the water, this is going to be a little bit of a different scenario. So now you're going to actually be picturing a desk and a table somewhere on this island. So you're going to be picturing one desk and one table somewhere on this island. On the desk, there is a nameplate with your name. Your full name is printed on the nameplate on the desk. So picture the desk with the nameplate on it. It has your name on it. Now the table has a vase filled with roses on it. So you have a desk with your nameplate and you have a table with a vase filled with roses. Now that you visualize both, visualize both the desk with the nameplate and the table with the roses. Now you're going to take a seat at one of them. So the desk with the nameplate has your name on it. Of course it has a chair. The table has chairs, a vase. Take a seat at one of them. Which did you imagine sitting at first? The desk or the table? Now as you've imagined these, I would also like to ask you to keep in mind how far apart are the desk and the table to each other. How far apart was the desk to the table, the table to the desk? Just imagine the distance to each other. The test is complete. <laughs> so now we can reveal what your answers actually mean. So first things first, you imagine the land surrounded by the water. So you essentially imagined your island. And I asked, what is the terrain on this land made of? Now, essentially, the firmness of the ground beneath you represents how stable your life currently feels. If you're on solid dirt, stone, concrete, or any sort of firm pavement, things in your life are quite steady. This also means you're especially focused and or have firm goals at this point in your life. If you're on soft grass, you're getting by, but your life is a balancing act that requires you to put forth constant effort. If you're on sand, in mud, or on any sort of unstable surface, your life might be chaotic or unbalanced at the moment. So the firmness of the ground indicates the stability of your life. I never did this in the last test, but I will also give you my answer. I personally imagined it to be soft grass, but I had it like surrounded by rocks a little bit. So there's grass, but it was stable with the rock. So maybe it means I'm a little bit stable and I'm a little bit getting by. Next, I asked how close or how far you were to the water. So this means the closer you are to the water, the more prepared for the unknown you feel right now. Though you can't control the future, you often take the initiative to do your best to steer things in the way that you want. If you're standing far away from the water, you're feeling uneasy about what the future holds and you tend to be more reactive than proactive. So my answer was that I was actually standing quite close to the water's edge close enough to feel comfortable because I do like to see a pretty view of water, so. Next, I asked how calm or how active the water was. The water's movement in this case represents whether you're currently more relaxed or more stressed. So you 
you can probably imagine. The more crashing waves, the more concerns and anxieties you have. The waters are mostly still or gently swaying. You're relaxed and in a calm state. So essentially crashing waves means you might be feeling a little bit concerned with anxieties. Calm waters, the more calm, the more gentle the waters, the more relaxed and in a state of calm. So when I took this test, I just imagined the water to be very calm. Maybe that's because I like to personally swim in calm waters, but that's just what I imagined. So I had a sort of idyllic island experience. Next, I said, now get a detailed vision of you getting in the water. Imagine feeling the water against your skin. Is the water a comfortable temperature? So the amount of comfort you felt with the water represents your optimism in life. If you imagine the water feeling pleasant, you're an optimistic person. If you imagine the water being too cold, too hot, or uncomfortable in any way, you have a lot of negative tendencies and often fear the worst case scenarios in life. Which is interesting. I actually imagined the water to be very comfortable. Like I said, this was sort of my ideal island situation. Next. How much of your body is in the water? When you got in, how much did you submerge your body? The depth of your body in the water represents how you approach the unknown. If you dipped a toe or a foot in the water, you are a cautious and calculated person. The deeper your body, the more spontaneous and willing to take chances you are. If your entire body or head went underwater, you'll take risks without planning and deal with the consequences later. You have no fear of failure. So I think I was like waist deep or a little bit more in the water, so I guess I would fall somewhere in the middle. So I'm a little bit spontaneous, but not so much so that I do things without fear or failure. Now. I asked you also to imagine a cup sitting on the ground and you picked it up and you put water inside. What is the cup made of? If the cup is see-through, for example, if it's made of glass, you're an open individual and you wear your heart on your sleeve. If the cup isn't transparent, you're a guarded person. So if it was like a thick mug of some sort. The cup hardness represents your sensitivity. If the cup is made of glass, you're thick-skinned. If it's made of paper or plastic, you're more emotional. So, for me, the cup was see-through. It was sort of made of a double layer of glass, which I don't really know what that is saying about me. It says that um, if it's made of glass, you're thick-skinned, which is interesting. I think I would definitely see myself as more of an emotional person. Um, it was definitely see-through, however, so I guess I also wear my heart on my sleeve. I didn't imagine paper or plastic. Next, I asked how full is the cup? The amount of water in the glass represents how confident you are in yourself. The more water in the glass, the more self-assured you are. Any additional space for water in the cup represents how much untapped potential you believe you have. So that's interesting. I think I saw the glass is like three quarters of the way full. So guess I'm confident with a little bit of untapped potential that I believe I have. Interesting. I wonder if you saw the glass as almost empty if you think you have a lot of untapped potential. It's interesting. Now I said to imagine yourself drinking the water. How much water did you drink? The amount of water you drank represents how social you are. The more water you drank, the more extroverted and eager to be in the spotlight you are. The less you drank, the more reserved and introverted you are. If you only took a small sip, you rarely brag and prefer not to talk about yourself. I took a small sip. <laughs> Maybe because in actuality I, I need to drink more water and I don't, but I just took a little tiny sip of water. I'm definitely an introvert. I think I'm like an introvert on occasion masquerading as an extrovert, but yeah, I took a small sip. So if you gulped it down, I think you're quite social. I wonder if that's accurate. Seems pretty interesting, actually. It's true, I don't really brag or talk about myself often. The next question. 
did the thought of drinking the water gross you out because it was from the island after all so if you are put off by the thought of drinking the water it means you know your negative and toxic traits and you try to acknowledge and repair them even if it makes you uncomfortable if you weren't grossed out by the water, it means you've accepted your negative and toxic traits or aren't aware of them. I think I fell somewhere in between, oddly enough, because I thought it was weird that I was drinking the water from the sea, but I sort of imagined it as being like clean water, so it wasn't that gross. So maybe I'm in the middle? I'm not quite sure. What, were you completely grossed out? Not at all, or somewhere in the middle like me? I think I do acknowledge some toxic traits. And, um, yeah, maybe I'm unaware as well, who knows? <laughs> now, the next one. The desk. So there was a desk and a table on the island. When I was first reading this, I confess that I, I didn't quite understand that there was a desk and a table immediately, but then when I reread it, I sort of got it, so... <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get that, but anyways. It essentially says that the table had a vase filled with roses on it and the desk had a name tag on it, so your nameplate. And once you visualize both of them, you're supposed to take a seat at them. Which did you sit at? The desk or the table? The desk represents career slash monetary goals and the table represents romance and family. The one you sat at is what you're currently prioritizing. So it's interesting because at first I was imagining the desk because I didn't really get that they were asking the difference between a desk or a table. I was kind of thinking the desk was the table. But then when I read them both, I was like, oh, okay, sorry. I read too quickly. Clearly there is a difference. And I just imagined myself sitting at the table with the pretty flowers. <laughs> so who knows what that really means about me. Maybe I failed to understand that. Did you get that one? Next, you were also supposed to imagine how far apart the desk and the table were. So if the desk and the table are touching, you are currently focused on both the career and romantic family slash related things. The farther apart they are, the less interested you are in the one that you're not sitting at. So of course, if you're sitting at the desk and the table is super far away, you're clearly not interested in that aspect. But if they're close together or almost touching, it sort of means that you're currently focused on both. So you're either focused on both or just specifically one or the other. I believe my table and my desk were essentially right next to each other, not touching, but they were close enough. So like maybe five feet apart or six feet apart or something like that. So there you go, we're finished. Did you find this test accurate? I think I actually found this one pretty accurate. This is why I love doing these imagination personality type tests. They're so interesting. Let me know if you found this accurate or not and if you would like to share your answers as well down below in the comment section I would be very curious if you do enjoy these imagination test type videos please give it a thumbs up so I know the kind of content that you're looking for on my channel I decided to film this one so soon after the other personality test because a lot of you do give me positive feedback in the comment section and with your thumbs up so that's always an indication of who's enjoying and who's not. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with me and to do this personality test. Just so you know, this is for fun. There should be nothing too deep into this kind of test. It's just a fun look at your potential personality traits. Of course, if you didn't find this test accurate at all, it could just be that in the moment, this is just not a current reflection of who you really are. But if you did find it accurate, I'm just really curious to know that as well. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy these tests and I hope you did find it a lot of fun. I do really like these engaging tests that you can actually participate live in the moment and then find out your answers in the end. I think it's pretty cool. So if you are enjoying, there will definitely be more to come in the future. So again, Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you and I just love the sense of community that we have going on here. Anytime I see a new subscriber, I always really want to know who it is. So if you are new to subscribing, leave a comment down below to let me know. 
and I hope we can become a sort of little tight-knit community around here. But anyways, once again, these outros tend to be so long, but thank you so much for watching. The test itself is not quite long. Surprisingly, it's just a lot of background information and meaning and all that, but 